I'm a lifelong Southerner married to an Indian man who grew up in South Africa during apartheid. And I am fiercely proud of both. If you don't like that, well, bless your heart. I'm Cheryl Parbu, and this is Southern Life, Indian Wife. Today, I'm joined by Chef Elliot Farmer. This dear man is going to leave you laughing and probably hungry. I just love him. He is a celebrity chef, entrepreneur, cookbook author, and TV and radio personality. He was a contestant on Food Network show Cutthroat Kitchen for two seasons. His company catered Super Bowl 52 in Atlanta. He filmed a pilot for Food Network's Atlanta Chefs and has even appeared in movies and The Real Housewives of Atlanta. And he has a doctorate to boot. We talk about what it was like for him growing up poor in Atlanta and then becoming a celebrity chef, about making love to your food when you cook, and his new venture with some big celebrities. I'm not a name dropper, Jay-Z and Usher, but it's quite a story. So I am thrilled to welcome Chef Elliot Farmer. Man, I'm out of breath after saying all that stuff. (laughs) So welcome. Well, thank you for having me. (laughs) (laughs) I am so glad to have you here. I've been wanting to get you here forever. So today is a really good day for me. So likewise, likewise. Yeah. So let's talk about you. Do you ever sleep with all those things that you do? (laughs) <laughs> I do actually. Uh, I get a get two hours a <gasps> night. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I I average uh, at least a good seven. Okay. Seven hours of sleep a night. So during the day, you must not sit down. I try to get a nap in. Ah, I really okay. do. Um, but but my days are full of uh, trying to create more. Uh, business, uh-huh. more business. And, and you try to wind down, you know, to, to allow your mind to, to rest. So when you do lay down to go to sleep, you're, you're pretty well resting. Uh, but my mind is always constantly going, what's going to be the next big thing? What's going to be the next, uh, food adventure or, or business adventure for me? So wow. I'm constantly, if not physically working, I'm doing it in my mind. Yeah. And that's why you are one of those people that I've looked up to for a long time, even before I met you. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I have to talk about how I even heard about you and the influence that you had on me in my life and my career. Oh. So you and I may even cry when I'm talking about this. Oh, don't cry. <laughs> um, so you are actually one of my husband's patients. That's my buddy. Yes. He's he's one of the best dentists in the world, isn't he? He is the best. <laughs> I've I've been following him, I know, for over 20 years. Oh, wow. I had no idea it was that long. When he moves, I move with him. Awesome. (laughs) All right. Well, and that, I think, is how he knew so much about you and your trajectory with your career. And I don't know how many years it's been now, but I had just started writing my book or just kind of thinking about the process of writing my novel, but Mm. I didn't think anybody was ever going to read it. And he started coming home from work saying, you know, I've got this patient. And of course, he didn't tell me any details, no No. violation of anything. Oh, no. He has this patient who is just such a go getter. And he put out this cookbook and he's selling that cookbook and he is working his way through this area, this field of culinary arts. And you can do this, too, honey. Right. And so, you know, over a couple of years. That really planted that seed in my mind. And I thought, you know what? Other people can do this and get successful. And I can I can publish a book. Absolutely. So you are one of those people that really planted that seed for me and helped me to publish my book. And now I'm working on my second one. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I just wanted to say thank you to, you know, in front of the whole world for helping (laughs) me do that. Well, you never know uh, how your story uh, is affecting people. Right. Or, or not, uh, for that matter. But wow, I, I never knew that. Yeah, yeah. I never knew that. So there you go. <laughs> there we go. That's one of those ways that you've impacted people. But I mean, I think definitely with what you do for a living, you've had a huge impact on people with spreading your your cooking, your knowledge. And I think probably, you know, your love for food and maybe love for people through your food. Right? I do love people. Yeah. I do. I'm, I'm such a people person. 
I never meet any strangers. But for me to meet someone, I guess, for the first time, literally, mm-hmm. you would think I've known them for ages. Well, that's how I felt when I first met you. Really? Yeah. And I think I first met you at the the filming of your pilot. Oh, the pilot show for the Food yeah. Network. We were where? Downtown at the Rialto. Yes. Yeah. You and 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 your husband were all decked out in your fineries. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I was really glad that I was dressed up and I had makeup on when I first met you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. You're, you're beautiful without makeup. Oh, you're too sweet. Yeah. So, yeah, that was uh, that's been a couple of years ago now. Yeah, it has. Yeah. A couple of years ago. So that was a fun time. I just felt like, you know, we're best friends already. <laughs> already. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So let's kind of talk about Let's just go back to the beginning and where you began and how did this whole love of cooking start? Where did you grow up? Well, uh, to, to, to be honest, uh, the love of cooking didn't come until my teenage years. I used to actually hate to cook. Oh, I hated it with a passion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a native Atlantan, uh, a greedy baby. Uh, and so those of us who are native Atlantans uh, of, of the old uh, when we say Grady Babies, you know, the, yeah, we're 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 originals. <laughs> OK, OK. We're a rare breed. Uh, but I I grew up in a, a home with my aunts, my great aunts, uh, my grandmother. And so we had to do chores. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fellas uh, went outside and worked on cars with my uncles and great uncles. OK. And, and the, the females stayed in the house and, and learned to cook. Okay. Well, back then and even still now, I don't like getting dirty. <laughs> I don't like all of that oil on my skin, all on my hands, because I would see my cousins and my uncles try to wash up, you know, for dinner. Mm-hmm. And their hands were still just as dark uh, from all of that, that, that whatever from the cars. And that was not my life. Not your thing. No, no. So I uh, asked if I could stay in and, and cook. And and it was a lot of us in the home. Uh, we call it the family house, and it's still uh, standing today. Oh, awesome. Um, my younger cousins, um, uh, I guess this would be the fifth generation, uh, is staying in the home in Atlanta. Wow. And, and, and his children. And so uh, probably with 17, 18 of us in a three bedroom house. Oh my goodness. And so cousins piled up in, you know, beds or Uh making pallets on the floor. But the thing was, we never really had what I considered enough food. Okay. And so I was in the kitchen, you know, helping my aunts and they taught me how to stretch. Okay. You know, food and, and, but it still wasn't enough. And so the reason I didn't like cooking, uh, because at night when we would go to bed, my cousins would beat me up because they were still hungry. And they said it was my fault because you was in the kitchen cooking. I said, but I only cooked what they had. Right. You know, it's not my fault. <laughs> so, I, you know, and so I hated it because I knew every night uh, and I love my cousins to life, love them dearly. Uh, uh-huh. But they would go in on me, you know, and, and I said, oh, this is not what I want to do. But. It's either this or go outside and get dirty. Mm-hmm. So I, I took the beatings for a few years. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And that was the main reason why I hated cooking. So so let me ask, though, um, as far as, you know, you said normally the women were in the kitchen and the guys were out working on the cars. I know like in Indian culture, which I married into, it's very much like that. Yeah. And I mean, my husband, he's a great dentist, but he never learned to cook. Yeah, <laughs> and when we got married, he or when we were dating, actually, he didn't even know where the silverware was in the kitchen. Yeah, so there would have been a huge, you know, hubbub, huge uproar if he had been in the kitchen cooking when he was growing up. So was it was there any kind of you know stigma about that? There was, uh, and and, and kind of sort of still is. Okay, uh, I think more so now because they know that I cook. They are called uh, Elliot. You know, uh, we're having this Sunday dinner. Uh, you know, <laughs> what do you bring him? Yeah. But now uh, uh, we I have uncles, you know, surprisingly that really can cook. Oh. But growing up, that wasn't the case. Mm-hmm. It was the the women did the cooking and, and the men were the outdoors. Uh, and then as time grew, uh, you know, they taught us uh, because the 
the the the female children weren't being born anymore. It was more males. Uh, that happens, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, life still had to go on. So we started having to do chores on the inside of the home, mm-hmm. uh, cleaning and dusting and doing laundry and things like that. And my uh, aunt, uh, uh, who's deceased now, she said, listen, uh, it was she had uh, three girls and one boy. And then I moved in with her. Uh, so uh, we were the first five grandchildren. And she said, you fellas, you boys are going to learn how to uh, keep house just as well as these girls. And her. so that was how I began to to really get into a more of a domestic type mm-hmm. of, of, of situation because she was adamant about that. But that was not the norm okay. uh, for us. Yeah, That yeah. was not the norm. OK, yeah, because like when I was growing up. I mean, men, women cooked. It it didn't make any difference, but none of us were super into cooking anyway. It was kind of like, you know, hamburger helper or cube steaks or something like that. I know. I know. (laughs) I know. So I would say it's not really real cooking. No. Well, I mean, but it's a hamburger. You're helping it. You know, that's true. Helping it, you know, with with some preservatives. What you already (laughs) have. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I mean, my parents did cook and it was a lot of Southern cooking and stuff like that because my family's from Kentucky. Oh, nice. So we had chicken livers. That's one of my favorite foods that I have not had in years because my husband, who grew up a vegetarian, will not have that in his house. But do you like chicken livers? Did you ever eat that? We had chicken livers. We had the gizzards. We had yes. the chicken feet, the chicken back. Uh, wow. We had, of course, the drumsticks, the thighs, the breasts, the wings. But more so growing up in my home, we had the chicken feet, the chicken livers, gizzards and the chicken backs. So how do you prepare that? Is that one of those things that you had to do to stretch the food? Yes. OK, absolutely. So how does that work with with chicken backs? Uh, we would we would fry them mm-hmm. um, uh, because we Growing up, we raised a lot of our own. I uh, had one cousin that raised uh, turkeys, uh, one cousin that raised chickens. So we always had fresh eggs, whether chicken eggs or turkey eggs. I had uh, another cousin that raised hogs. Uh, I had, wow. a, and then all of us had some type of uh, vegetation gardens. Okay. Uh, my grandfather, uh, actually, my great grandfather, we had a, a, our garden was on top of the roof, and so wow. we would go up on the top of the roof and we would get our you know, greens or, or, or what have you, uh, cabbage or what have you. And when you have just one chicken uh, and you have 17 people to feed, you, you learn how to cut those in such a way mm-hmm. that it's going to stretch. And then how we also stretch that, that chicken back and those other pieces of chicken that we, you know, were able to are privileged to get. We would always make a gravy. Okay, and so that would stretch it even more. Mm-hmm. So even if you didn't actually have a nice piece of chicken in it, you had some pieces and that flavor and that flavor. Yeah, and then we would make either what we call whole cakes, uh, uh, yeah. which is like a a, a cornbread uh, pancake, if you will, okay. made with hot water, uh, and we would fry it, or we would make some uh, at that time mayonnaise drop biscuits. Ooh, what's that? I'm not a fan of mayonnaise. So. Oh, but are you a fan of biscuits? <laughs> I love biscuits. I will have to make you some mayonnaise drop biscuits. Okay. It's, it's uh, instead of the buttermilk and eggs mm-hmm. uh, that people may put in or the mayonnaise or, or not the mayonnaise, but or the butter or, or shortening, we use the mayonnaise. Oh. So it was just the mayonnaise uh, and, and mm-hmm. some uh, all purpose flour, a little salt, right? Mm-hmm. Um, some baking soda or either baking powder. And you mix it and you take a spoon and you drop them on the pan that you're going to bake them in. It sounds easy. It really is. I can do that. It really <laughs> is easy. And the key thing is to use a very cheap and expensive mayonnaise. Don't get the expensive. The cheaper no name brand works best. OK. And that's what we did. Oh. And we were able to really stretch. Uh, I can even still do that today, which actually helped me on on some of my uh, uh television shows uh-huh. <laughs> on the Food Network, learning how to make do, mm-hmm. uh, especially with Cutthroat Kitchen. Because don't they just give you a few ingredients and just say, do it? And do it. Oh. And then if someone comes and sabotages you <laughs> and takes something away, well, you still have to create that dish. Oh, my goodness. And and so that upbringing 
helps me. Heck yeah. On that show. <laughs> yeah. So you, you turned it around to work for you. I did. Man. I did. So did you live in the city in Atlanta? Yes. Okay. So I you had garden on the roof. On the roof. And all these people had their, the hogs and the chickens. Yes. Where, where were they? Well, Atlanta back then was not what it is now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, I just moved here in 94. So. Oh, so you, you just came just before the uh, Olympics. Yes. So you, you've seen the real city life. Mm -hmm. Atlanta used to be very, very country. Mm -hmm. Um not as much as it was on Gone with the Wind, uh, because that was filmed here. Actually, Tara Boulevard, Tara oh, yeah. is really Tara Boulevard. OK. And most people don't really realize that. Uh -huh. That's true. Old South Atlanta. Uh, but we had, you know, we did have. Um, I-20, I remember when that came along, uh, but it was mostly just, you know, roads. Uh, we didn't have all the fancy interstates. Huh. Uh, and so it was easy for us to to uh, have farms. We didn't live in a subdivision where we couldn't have, you know, the animals uh -huh. and all of that. So you just go where well, we're going over John Boy's house uh -huh. uh, and, and he said he got his eggs. And so we get in the wagon uh, or, or the station wagon. Uh, I was thinking, what, horse and wagon? No, <laughs> <you're> not that <laughs> the, old. The station wagon. <laughs> And and uh, that was that was our field trip. Awesome to get in the uh, station wagon with our grandfather and go pick up you know stuff from the relatives. Wow! So it it is amazing to me to see other people that have such a a family and cultural connection to their food. Yeah, because you know I'm married into an Indian family, and man, oh man, food is like numero uno thing with them. Yeah, that, that's the entire identity and. I didn't grow up like that, partially because my family moved us from Kentucky and we were just kind of the, the outliers. And, you know, I had a lot of McDonald's and stuff like that. Oh, I know, so <laughs> but it wasn't it, I wasn't close to my family. And so food wasn't really a close thing. But okay. so, I mean, it sounds like food was really a, a cultural connection. Yes. And family. Yes. Um, so. Did you grow up in an area that was predominantly African-American? I did. OK, I did. Um, I grew up um, actually uh, just just uh, not far from the family house. Uh, those projects don't even exist anymore off of uh, uh, Memorial Drive where Stardust, uh, the drive in. Mm -hmm. I think it's the only one that's still actually in existence in Atlanta. Um, but. Uh, that's even still today is is predominantly a black uh, area, African American area. So uh, it's a different type of culture. Okay, a different type of culture, but totally different from what it was when I was growing up. Okay, uh, everybody knew everybody back mm -hmm. then. You know, uh, if, if you did something wrong, where well, you got it from the neighbor, you got it from the pastor. <laughs> You got it, you know, and when I say got it, you you, you got a whooping. <laughs> uh, even from the pastor? The, the, the pastor, the, the principal, the teacher, because oh back goodness. then uh, teachers were allowed to spank you yeah. in school and principals were. Uh, but, you know, but it, it helped, I, I think, mold me into to who I am now, mm -hmm. who I am now. And because everybody was such a close knit and knew everybody, knew everybody's business. I, I guess that's why I'm such a people person now. Uh -huh. I, I think even today. Yeah. Yeah. It, it groomed you for being able to, you know, just not meet a stranger. Right. Yeah, And I don't, I really don't meet strangers. That's awesome. That's awesome. So when was the first time you ever got out of your comfort zone and maybe ate. Did you eat fast food when you were growing up? Oh, no. OK. <laughs> no, no, that was not something that was allowed. OK. No. How come? Uh, well, one, we couldn't afford it. Oh, OK. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't afford it. There was too many miles and uh, we were just taught uh, that that we had dinner as a family. I love that. Yeah. That's so important. We we have dinner as a family. It may not be what you want, uh, but you're going to have something to eat um, every day growing up, every single day, seven days a week. 
we always had some type of bean okay. or lagoon. Mm-hmm. Always, always. Oh my goodness. Now you're saying that like, did you not like it when you were growing up? There was only one and still to this day, I will not eat. Oh, what's uh, that? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, we used to call them pocketbooks. Uh, but I think the, the actual name is, uh, it's called a butter bean. Okay. They're the real big fat white ones. Uh, and, and the smaller ones are called lima beans, but they're, they're more so green. Mm-hmm. I'll eat lima beans. I love lima beans. But those, those big pocketbooks, those, uh, new, and we had those every night with dinner, oh, Monday boy. through Saturday. On Sunday, we got a different bean. Uh, but Monday through Saturday, we had, Pocketbooks, and I guess you ate it because that was what you had. I did not. You did not. I <laughs> did not. Uh, and not until I was a teenager and we moved that they realized that I never ate them. How, what'd you do with them? Slip them to the dog or I somebody else? I used to put them behind the stove. Oh, you sneaky boy! <laughs> and uh, you know, we had bugs. They didn't know why we had. Uh, rodents and they didn't know why mm. uh, back then and when we moved and they moved that stove they saw all of those uh, pocketbooks those those butter beans <laughs> piled high uh, behind that stove and they knew it was me did you get a whipping then I got the worst beating of my <laughs> life <laughs> and how, how old were you then I was a teenager oh boy wow I was a teenager yes that's funny. Yeah. But I mean, if you hate it, you hate it. You know, you just, you're not going to. That's, 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 you're not going to eat it. And, and maybe if I prepared it myself uh, with a different flavor, maybe I would like it now, but I'm not even willing to do that. <laughs> Can't even stand the sight of them, no, right? Yeah. No. Man, man. <laughs> so, okay. When you're a kid in the kitchen, you're having to cook. Did you have to do the dishes and all that kind of stuff after cooking or was it just cooking was your thing and then you were able to get out of there? Oh, no. The, the kitchen, uh, if you cook, you definitely clean. Okay. And that included uh, sweeping and mopping every night. Wow. Yes, sir. Yes. You, you did all of it. And we didn't have these uh, luxurious dishwashers uh, where you just load it up and push a button. Right. No, our hands. <laughs> Where the dishwashers and and uh, I still today hand wash dishes. I think they get cleaner that way. I know they do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and even if I use uh, the luxurious dishwasher, I still hand wash mm-hmm. before I put them in. And and my children say, "Well, Dad, it, the the detergent says that it'll get all of that off." I said, Mm-mm. "Yeah, you don't trust that." No. no. So I I still hand wash and I still sweep Mm -hmm. and mop the kitchen. Wow. Every night I still wipe down the countertops and I still wipe down the uh, cabinets and I still wipe down the walls. That was our routine. Every day. Every night. Wow. Okay. That's what we had to do. You were raised by some really good people. Yeah. Sounds like it. Now these little jokers they got now, these little great 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 grandkids and great great grand nephews and cousins and nieces, they act as if they don't know anything about it. I say, Well, what happened? Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, my kids love to cook, but they think, Okay, the cooking, I I'm eating the food that I cooked and I'm done. No. And they leave it and I'm like banging my head into the wall trying to get them to just clean it up, but they think, you know, no. they don't have to do that. Oh, they think wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I do end up making them, but I just can't understand why it has to be such a such a fight. Yeah. If we clean as we go, which is what I was taught, mm-hmm. clean as you're going. So by the time the food is ready, you're almost completely clean. Yeah. You know, yeah. half of the battle is really gone. Well, that's kind of my problem. I think you've probably seen some of my pictures on Facebook where I'm like, this is my cooking disaster because I don't clean as I go because it all just yeah. kind of explodes in the kitchen. Yeah. I need you to come and give me a cooking lesson. I'd be honored. <laughs> Absolutely. Man. So, OK, how did you get into cooking as a career? Because I, I read online that you were a registered nurse at one point. A registered nurse and educator. Uh, I taught high school. You did. I did. I taught high school economics. Uh, also, uh, college level, I, I taught fundamentals of nursing. 
Wow. I also taught psychology. I have my PhD in psychology. You do not. I do. Uh, okay. I, I feel like the laziest person in the world right now. Wow. No, no, no. Education for us growing up was, was very huge. Mm -hmm. um, we were taught uh, because I come from that era. Uh, it, it was a different era for for African Americans, mm -hmm. uh, we weren't called African Americans uh, back right. then. We were called other things, and even on my birth certificate, uh, right here in Atlanta, I on my birth certificate, I'm called uh, uh, the N word. No, it's on my birth certificate. Uh, no, yes, really, it's on my birth certificate. How is that possible? Yeah, I mean, I I don't come from that era. Yeah. And I, I didn't grow up in Atlanta. I cannot believe yeah, that. Yeah, that's on my birth certificate. Oh, that just makes me sick to be a yeah. part of the, the people that would let that happen. Well, I mean, but that, that's, that's who we were, <sighs> you know, back then. Uh, um, it's an unfortunate thing, but that, that's what our, our life was. So uh, we were taught in order uh, to get out of that uh, community, mm -hmm. we had to have education mm -hmm. uh, because no matter what they did, they couldn't take what your, your knowledge, they can never take your knowledge. Right. And so I, I believe that. Mm -hmm. and, and I still believe that. Sure. And so I, uh, I became what I call a professional student. Okay. And I still love to learn. Absolutely love to learn. Uh, but once I obtained that PhD, I, I kind of put the school life on hold. Well, I think you <laughs> accomplished quite a bit. <laughs> it, it was hard as as the devil. <laughs> I bet. I bet. It, it took a long time, but uh, it was it was no joke. Right. It was no joke. And so, uh, cooking as a profession, I, I would say, came uh, when I was a teenager. I worked in high school as a busboy. Mm -hmm. I did it at the Sheraton uh, Hotel uh, at the airport. And so we did that. Uh, and at that time, uh, the busboys were responsible for uh, creating the food for happy hour. OK. And during that time, happy hour wasn't just some peanuts and pretzels. It was real, real food. It was real food. OK. They would have filet mignon. They would have shrimp cocktail. Wow. You know, things like that at happy hour. <laughs> and it was crazy. And so I knew how to make collard greens, ham hocks, you know, fried chicken, uh -huh. smothered chicken, whole cakes, things like that. Mayonnaise drop biscuits. I knew that kind of cooking. Right. But they said, oh, no, no. Uh, we want our filet mignon to be uh, medium. Uh, if you go over medium well, it's overcooked. I said, well, what do you mean? Don't you supposed to have it well done? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm accustomed to. Right. But there was three certified chefs in there. Uh, the mother, Mother Gussie. Uh, her last name was Smith. Her son, James Smith, Chef James Smith, and his wife, Maddie Smith. And they trained me okay. to be a sous chef. On my first day, they said, we're going to show you, you know, how to do it. And they did that second night. They said, we're going to help you. And that's what they did. That third night, they told me you're on your own. Oh, boy. And they meant that. Wow. Trial by fire, I guess. That was literally. <laughs> uh, I, I began to experience my culinary war zones and, uh -huh. and, and war scars. <laughs> literally. Uh, and so, but it, it groomed me for what uh, I'm doing today. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I never imagined that, that that would happen. I was just trying to make money while I was in school. Sure. Yeah. That that was it. And I stayed with the Sheraton 20 years. Wow. I did. Uh, when I went off to college, I first wanted to be a medical doctor. And I said, no, I don't want to go to school eight years. It's too long. <laughs> yeah, that's a long time. So I settled for an associate's degree uh, because back then you, you could become a nurse with two years. A okay. registered nurse and and still make the same amount of money as a four year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so why not just do the two years? And that's what yeah. I did. And so I did that. By this time now, uh, I'm living in Tennessee. OK. What part of Tennessee? Uh, in Chattanooga. OK. And then I stayed, uh, lived at the foot of uh, uh, Signal Mountain, 
uh, okay. which is one of the mountains in that area. And so I did that and uh, decided to to go back to school and, and get a, a BS. And I had been in school so long. So I asked my counselor, what can I get a degree in with what I have already? Uh-huh. And he said, if you take a few more classes, you can get your economics degree. And that's how that became. <laughs> <laughs> Just because it was it was the quickest thing. It right? was the quickest thing at that time. I said, uh-huh. OK, I need to come on out of here. A little time. <laughs> and so I'm still nursing on the weekends, a bailiff shifts. Uh, as long as you work two two uh, 12 hour shifts, Saturday and Sunday, you got paid for 40 hours. Wow. And I taught school Monday through Friday. And as long as I worked one night out of a month at the Sheraton, I could keep my benefits. That's amazing. So I worked three jobs for 20 years. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? I mean, I think, you know, you you came from this place where you knew you had to do that. We had to do it. And Darmish, my husband, he, I don't know if you know this, he grew up in Johannesburg, South Africa. Yeah, I know. He never told me. Yeah. And so, I mean, I'm sure you know about apartheid. Yeah. Everybody was segregated. So he grew up in a South Asian community okay. next to Soweto that was all of, you know, the, the African people, black Africans in that area that were stuck there. Right. And then the white people ruled the country. Wow. And so he grew up knowing that education is the <clears throat> only way for him to succeed. To get out. Because yeah. there is absolutely no choice. Yeah, And so he did the same kinds of things. He came over here and he went to college. He went to dental school. He worked as a security guard nights when he was in dental school. Right. And you just do what you got to do. So that's why he's so, 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 uh, when you go in his office, how you do it? Yeah. <laughs> security guy. He was a security. Security. Guy. Yep, security. <laughs> oh, it makes sense now. Yeah. 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 And, you know, he and I and some friends who are just freshly immigrated from South Africa were having a talk the other night because, you know, the, the Indian mentality is education, education, education. Yes. And even as when our kids were growing up, he put a lot of pressure on him because he said, you know, there's nothing acceptable below an A. And I said, dude, come on, you know, relax a little bit. But they said, you know, it's in their DNA that you have to instill that in your kids to succeed. And I realized growing up in suburban white America, I never had to worry about that. Wow. I, you know, I could go to college and do well. I could not go to college and do okay because I had more opportunities. Wow. Yeah. No, all of us, unfortunately, didn't have that. Yeah. And I think that's what's so great about talking to people that are different from you is you learn this stuff. Yeah. I just, I don't want to ever be segregated from different people again. And that's why I love to do this podcast and the things that I write is, I think it opens people's eyes. Yes. I think it really does. Because we all, we all need to know this. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we're still humans. Heck yeah. Your blood is just as red as mine, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. We're, we're just people. Right. At the end of the day. And we just traveled life maybe a little differently. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah, that's absolutely it. And, it, and it's circumstances that were bon- beyond our control. It's, right. it's where we were born. It's Absolutely. We had no choice about that at yeah. all. But now we have a choice. We do. And, and, and hopefully, you know, people are, are, are making the, the wiser choices. Uh, unfortunately, some don't. Right. But, but those who, who are, kudos to them. Mm-hmm. And as long as you still have breath, you still have the opportunity. Absolutely. To make better choices. Yes. To better yourself, to create a better life for yourself. So mm-hmm. I, 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 at this age, you know, I just... Uh, recently, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, received my PhD. So, you know, and, and middle age, well in middle age, <laughs> you know, I'm still going to school uh-huh. because that's just what I wanted to do. Never thought all of these years later that I would still be a doctor, not a medical doctor, but I'm still a doctor. So, okay. Should we call you Dr. Elliot or Chef Elliot or Dr. Chef Elliot? Some people, they, they say, uh, Dr. Chef Elliot. I like that. They do. I mean, own it all. They do. I and love and that. you know, when I was uh teaching um uh college level, you know, they would say professor. Uh but it's very few people 
uh, know that I have my PhD. I'm using doctor a little bit more now uh-huh. uh, than, than, you know, previous uh, these past two years. But uh, so it's, it's becoming uh, familiar to people, but, you know, and now with your podcast, with all of these, these <laughs> listeners, you know, uh, worldwide, I, I guess the, the secret is out. <laughs> the secret is out. Dr. Chef Elliot is that here. That is me. That wow. is me. So is the PhD in economics? It's actually in industrial organizational psychology. Holy and, moly. And so what I, I did, uh, I can be, you know, a human resources director if I choose, but I didn't want to do HR or I could be uh, a consultant mm-hmm. uh, for organizations that are having problems uh, in the workforce. And so with that, what I chose to specialize in was the food and beverage industry. OK, uh, perfect. And just combine my uh, culinary expertise with that. And and so I don't do a lot of consulting, uh, but I do. I do some uh, and I also do a lot of restaurant cons- uh, consulting. OK, but that's that's how I'm using it. Fantastic. That's and how I'm using it. You're also getting on TV and meeting celebrities, and I want to know about that. Well, they're so meeting me. Yes, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Well, you are a celebrity. I'm meeting you. Oh, you're listen. A celebrity. <laughs> yeah, and, so, and how did that all happen? It's crazy because um, I used to have a uh, a blog talk radio show. I did it for three years. Chef Elliott's Entertaining Solutions is what the title was. And I would have uh, as guests celebrity chefs every Thursday night between 7 p.m., 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And they would be chefs uh, from all over the world. And about six months in, it came to our attention that the Food Network would be tuned in. Wow. Every Thursday night. Wow. Someone from the Food Network uh, headquarters uh, office would be tuned in. And finally, uh, they sent, uh, what is it called on Facebook, uh, an inbox or a direct message or yeah, something. Yeah, like a messenger message. Yeah, mm-hmm. they sent us a message and was asking if uh, I would consider being uh, a recruiter for them hmm. uh, to get chefs to be on their uh, competition shows. Okay. Well, I thought that was a spam. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I might you know? think that too. Yeah, like the other day, I got an inbox message from um, Kit Harrington, Jon Snow on Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't him. Oh, wow. <laughs> Although maybe it was him and I just messed it up. <laughs> you just messed it up, you know. <laughs> but come to find out at that time, I sent it uh, to, to my uh, PR team. And I said, check this out to see if it's legit and come to find out it was legit. Wow. And so that's how my uh, uh, relationship with the Food Network started okay. through social media. Social media can be amazing. It can be, you know, and I would uh, recommend chefs to be on certain shows. And, you know, they would be nice to me, the Food Network. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> And and then after a while, I said to my PR uh, team, I said, well, wonder why they don't ask me to be on the show. So uh, uh, my publicist asked them and said, well, Chef Elliott wants to know why don't you ask him? And they said, well, we thought he would be too busy and wouldn't have time. <laughs> I said, if you don't tell them I would be on that show, you had better. <laughs> and that's how I got on one of the shows. Wow. Uh, Cutthroat Kitchen Season 8. Uh-huh. Uh, episode five at that time. And because at that time the ratings went through the roof and the YouTube uh, video of that show uh, at that time had record numbers, they invited me back. Awesome. And created an episode centered around my personality. Really? Is that still on YouTube? Can we find it's that? It's still on YouTube. Episode or season? It was season. Uh, the second time was season 11. Okay. Uh, episode two at that time. It was a Christmas episode. Uh, what was it called? The Naughty versus Nice. <laughs> okay. So was I a naughty chef? Oh. Or I, was I a nice chef? I think you had to have been a nice one. I can't imagine you being a naughty. What? Oh, there's a, <laughs> there is that 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 uh, stigmatism, you know that 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 uh, uh, not stigmatism, but that that uh, 
that's you know, sort of the personality. Yeah, trait of, a, of a chef. Okay. You know, there I do have that trait. Okay. Uh, nothing like it used to be because back then at my Sheraton years, they trained us to cuss you out. Really? Listen. I could put some words together. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> that would have you in so many tears. <laughs> but I was trained. Mm-hmm. And they said, if you're not mean, you're not a good chef. And over the course of time, I said, you know, this is this is not me. This uh-huh. is not really who I am. So I had to really, you know, get away from that. And and I'm I'm just as nice in the kitchen as I am now. But those times will come. Okay. You know. Wow. Yeah. So so at home, are you like that? Nice. Mean in the kitchen, nice in the kitchen. Oh, no, I'm wonderful. Okay. I'm, I'm uh, very humbling, very humble. Do you make your kids cook with you? Or do Not they like really. it? No. No. I, uh, now all of my children can cook to survive. Okay. Some are better than others. How many do you have? I have four boys. Oh, boys. Okay. I have all boys. I have uh, my two older godsons are like my children. They all live with me. Okay. You know, at, at some point uh, in their in their life. So they're they're mine. So I always say four four boys, but uh, they they're wonderful cooks. Awesome. All of them have worked with me at some point in their life. Okay. So you've given them something that they're going to carry with them for their lives yes for their lives yeah yeah that's pretty cool yeah but i'm i'm patient in the kitchen mm-hmm. um i actually love people to cook for me really i do okay i'm totally different at home now holidays i now i will get in the kitchen and i will feed them their uh, the masses okay yeah I I think you saw on Facebook one time that I couldn't cook a turkey and you're like, I'll yeah, come over there and make that for you. <laughs> I, I, and, and see, when I see those posts, I just think about my friend. <laughs> and I say, Lord, I, I thought he looked like he was losing weight when I was in his office. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. I said, I keep falling off. You know, when I was growing up. Oh, he done fell off a few pounds. He ain't eating. <laughs> you know, that's what we would think. Right. And so we would gather food and bring, take it to the house and fatten them up. That's what we called it. But no, um, no, your kitchen is, is your kitchen. And if that works for you, yeah. it works for you. Well, you know, I, I don't mind cooking so much. It's not my absolute favorite thing. But I got to tell you, when I got married, I married this guy who's used to vegetarian, yeah. super spicy, oh. curry kind of stuff. And See, then, that's my kind of eating. Oh, I mean, I like that. But that I was only 19 when I got married. Okay. And so what I knew to cook was, you know, fried Hamburger chicken. Hamper. Okay. I, I did know how to cook fried chicken and mashed okay. potatoes and okay. green beans with bacon and that kind of stuff. That's okay. what I grew up with. And he looked at that and just said, oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> so... I didn't really, you know, in my marriage, I didn't really learn to love to cook because we never ate the same things. And it was yeah. kind of a little bit of a tug of war. And his mom would come and bring her food. And I was jealous of that. And so cooking oh. was just not a, a fun thing. So now maybe I can cultivate that because I'm past all that stuff. Yeah. And just, you have to make it fun. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, when I teach uh, cooking classes, culinary classes, I, I I love to teach it with couples uh-huh. uh, because uh, I make it sexy. Oh yeah, food is romantic. It is very, uh, and and I, I and I don't know, you know, I want to keep this rated PG, but a lot <laughs> of my students uh, uh, nine months after that class had babies. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you know, I have some stories. Do they name the babies after you? I don't. I don't <laughs> think no. I don't think I have any that are named after me. No, but that's that's how even when I taught uh, advanced culinary arts in high school, I, I captured my high school students attention because I made cooking sexy. Yeah. You, you, you know, I mean, you have to make love to the chicken. Oh, OK. When you're cutting it up. 
Hmm. You have to cut it a certain way or she's not going to let you cut her again. <laughs> I have never had that kind of relationship with anything I'm cooking. But <laughs> I need to come take one of your classes. It's a, it's a wonderful experience. Wow. It truly is a Chef Elliot's experience okay. in the kitchen with me. And, and that's what I still do today, you know, with your significant other. Just have fun mm -hmm. in the kitchen. And before you realize it, you created some wonderful dishes. They're going to taste better because you're having fun. Yes. And you're not considering it. Oh, we got to feed them something. You know, it's uh -huh. not like a chore. Uh, you know, you want positive energy uh, because that goes into your food. Sure. I, I truly believe that. And, and that's what I try to do. So. OK, so you and you and uh, the doctor. I'll get you in the kitchen. All right. Well, do you think that maybe you can help us come up with a recipe for maybe like some southern fried tandoori chicken or oh, something absolutely. like that? Absolutely. That would be good. That would please both of us. And you can and you can you can either even uh, uh, fry it in the oven to make it healthier. OK. Instead of deep frying. All right. Right. I would be down with that. Yeah. I don't like to have a lot of oil and stuff no, in my kitchen. No, no. You know. All you need is some cooking spray. Okay. That's all you need. Mm. An oven fry. All right. Well, we need to get some kind of recipe going for that. Yeah. Let's do some serious fusion, you know, some Absolutely. soul, southern, and Indian Absolutely. together. And see, I love Indian cuisine. One, because curry is, is my favorite spice. Is it really? It is. Now, how'd you get turned on to that? I, I don't know, but I don't remember, actually, but... It is once I was uh, introduced to uh -huh. it, it has been a, such a love affair. Wow. I mean, I eat curry something, whether it's curry goat, curry chicken, curry something, mm -hmm. at least once a week. Oh, my goodness. OK. At least once a week. And there are different levels of heat, you know, to the curry. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't eat it as spicy as I once did. You know, we get a little old that things start changing <laughs> yes. in the body. We need we some Zantac. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I kind of relax. I tone it down. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, but uh, absolutely. Uh, curry chicken is one of my top sellers to my corporate clients. Oh, wow. When we're catering. OK, very cool. I had no idea. I absolutely love it. That's awesome. I absolutely love curry. So with your cooking, man, you have like crossed all kinds of boundaries with the curry and you know, you've cooked the chicken backs and, yeah. and I mean, you've done all kinds of stuff in this world. So yeah. That is impressive. I had some chicken gizzards last night. For oh. dinner. <laughs> that sounds so good to me because I had that as a kid and I say that to my husband and he's like, don't even mention that word. <laughs> we'll have to create them in a different way for him. Okay. Uh, where he doesn't realize he's eaten it until he has actually finished and he said oh that was good yes you have to enjoy it before you yeah. find out what it is yeah, yeah. We, we we can come up with some stuff for him all right before he listens to this podcast yes yeah we won't <laughs> we won't clue him into that yet so what's on the horizon for you what good things are coming up so some things that we're doing now i have been uh selected as uh one of the premier chefs for this new company that's coming to Atlanta that actually is in Atlanta now uh, called Try Hungry. Uh, it's based out of uh, Washington, D.C. That's the headquarters office. Uh, they uh, been in existence since 2016. OK, so uh, from uh, D.C., they set up a, another office in Philadelphia and now Atlanta is the third office. And so this kind of stemmed from the Super Bowl. Uh, I got an opportunity to to meet Usher's mom, uh, Janetta Patton. Oh, wow. And worked in. She has a shared kitchen uh, in Atlanta. Uh, Jay's Kitchen uh, Incubator. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the Super Bowl and the NFL uh, suggested uh, her kitchen be one of the kitchens that I choose to, to work in. Uh, and so uh, that's how we met. I chose her kitchen, not realizing it was her. Oh. At the time. Uh, and she was so impressed with my style in the kitchen, mm -hmm. uh, my work ethics, uh, my business savviness. Yeah. Uh, you know, so she kept my name on mine. And so when this was presented to her, she actually got Usher, her son, and he got Jay-Z, Beyonce's husband, to come on board. 
Oh, wow. Dang. And, and they put in $8 million. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> to, to make this happen here in Atlanta. And uh, she wanted me to be one of the premier chefs to start it up. Wow. And so I am one of those chefs because of her. Congratulations. Thank you. And um, this you, this is an exclusive because this has not even been told on social media or anybody. Wow. Knows this. So you're getting an exclusive. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting the dirt first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I am working with Usher, his mom, and Jay-Z. Wow. Have, the, have you met them all? I haven't met Jay-Z yet. Okay. I haven't met him yet, but I'm sure I will very, very extremely soon. Well, when you do tell him, I said, hi, I he won't will. know who I am. But no, maybe you will after you tell him. That. Well, the thing is, you just never know. Right. When we come and do those gizzards, <laughs> you know, I may bring him with me. Awesome, man. My kids would just faint and die right there, <laughs> especially my 11 year old. He is just into all of that kind of music. Really? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so these are these are people that I'm working closely wow. with. And just this past weekend, uh, I am the only one uh, chef that has been invited to go and cook for the headquarters from another city oh, okay. for the Hungry program. They were so impressed with just my tasting. And of course, I had curry chicken. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> and, and and that was uh, uh, Usher's mom, Janetta. Uh, she said, I love curry. And so I had to make something that I knew she liked. Isn't that cool how this little multicultural, you know, yeah. situation is going on here. And so I did it. And and uh, they sent me to to the headquarters office. And I uh, did a luncheon for them this past Friday. Okay. And from that, the CEO invited me back for uh, June 6th because they're having another celebrity chef from the Food Network that's going to be there as a mentor okay. to 10 chefs. And he invited me to come. Wow. Fantastic. I said, absolutely. And from that, now I am considered uh, the only uh, traveling ambassador chef for Hungary where I would go to each city. And cook for uh -huh. their clients. Wow. Uh, so, so you are, you're a big dog. Well, yes, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I would say well, that. Well, in, in my book, in most <laughs> other people's books, yes, for sure. But that's what's new on, on the horizon. This is a huge opportunity. Um, it's certainly the largest contract mm -hmm. that I have had since being in this full time. Um, and I've had some, been blessed to have some very large, you know, contracts. Okay. Um, but this awesome. is absolutely by far the largest. So you are spreading your influence and your passion for food really, really far now. So I am. And making... that's, that's what they wanted. You know, I actually mentioned they want my brand to grow with their brand because they're taking the nation by storm mm -hmm. uh, and wherever they go, they want to make sure that I go with them. Amazing. Isn't that amazing? What a story. That wow. is amazing. That is fantastic. And it came all from the Super Bowl. Wow. You know, you just never know. You don't. You, you just have to live an authentic life, I think, and always do your best. Absolutely. And I think good things come when Absolutely. That and, and uh, before I go back out, I've got to make a stop to my dentist's office because <laughs> <laughs> he, he gets on me. Yeah, before you're on camera anywhere, you yeah, yeah he, he gets on me, and I try to still do right. I think I look okay. I, yeah, I think you look pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I, I I take pride in my smile. Yep, and you've got a beautiful smile. Thank so you. you. It has carried me uh, quite quite far. Awesome. My smile. So. Well, I am so glad to have gotten to talk to you and get your story. I mean, like I said before, you're so inspiring oh, the way, you. you know, you you live an authentic life and you touch people wherever you go. So I'm just so glad to have had you here. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. I'm sorry that our time is up. I, I was know. having such a good time. <laughs> But I look forward to seeing, you know, all the good things that come from you. And I, maybe you'll come back again. We can talk about some more stuff. Absolutely. I would be on it. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much. All right. If you 
like this podcast so far, please continue following along by tapping the subscribe button wherever you listen to podcasts. If you really liked it, go on, be awesome, and leave a rating and a review. Find me on all social media, too, by searching Cheryl with an S, Parboo, that's P-A-R-B-H-O-O. Thanks for listening to Southern Life Indian Wife. Yo, if we go to 7-Eleven right now, we can be back in time for the game. I don't know, man. I don't want to miss kickoff. Okay, but Gatorade is two for two fifty when I use my 7-Eleven app. Dude, but kickoff. But how are we going to stay on top of our game while watching this game if we're not on that 7-Eleven game? I don't know. How? Keep up, dude. Two for two fifty Gatorade with my 7-Eleven app. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I'm feeling you now. Thank you. 7-Eleven. Be game day ready. Plus tax where applicable. Valid at participating locations.